Hi there and welcome to the art studio again today. So I will be doing 12 different paintings on a very small clipboard as you can see here. So the space that will be covered will be about 5 inches by 5 inches and each of the 12 clipboards that I do will have a unique painting. So stay tuned and see what we do with these. Alright so I've taken the little clipboards and I've taped them off with some masking tape covering most of the back and giving myself a clean edge here. So this will be five inches by five inches, which will only need about an ounce to an ounce and a half of paint. So I'm mixing my paints with the flow mix. You'll this see the rest of I'm going to go back to my craft black again. We're going to do a painting with a balloon. So let's get our background taken care of. Now your background does not have to be really thick with this one because you're adding all your other colors on top. So let me do my, get, use my finger, just get it all moved around. So remember, these are just five inch clipboards. And they're all taped on the back. But this is one of my favorite techniques. So I hope you get a chance to try this one. So what I like to do is I like to put dots of various colors around my canvas or sometimes squiggles. But I want this one to be bright and cheery. So I'm going to try to only use some of my brighter colors. I love this peacock blue. Just trying to scrape it all out of there. Don't want to waste paint. And I don't need very much paint for this also. Tiny bit of green. And then to add some contrast, we're going to drizzle some white. All right, and next we get, we take our balloon. Now what I like to do is I like to have a paper towel off to the side clean off my balloon from time to time. But really what you do is you just take your balloon and I've got a little balloon of course and it's not blown up very much. And you just dip it in and bring it out and put it back in in places that you want. Wipe it off if you have too much of your black on there. And you can just keep going. You can actually add more paint in a little bit if you want. You can also bring it back from your paper towel and put it on there. But look how cute. So it, it, that black is kind of taking over my paint, so I am going to add some more. But look how nice. If you feel like you have too much of your background black, you can also, now I've done this before, where I just kind of take it and wipe it off. You don't want to do too much of that because you do want your balloon to have that effect of the pull whenever you're done. So let's drizzle some more of this bright orange in here. Really like that bright orange. And you just keep drizzling and moving around your canvas until you have the effect that you want. I'm putting more of the green in because I do like that too. more of my white. All right, here we go. There we go.
I do like a little bit of negative space just because it shows off the colors a little bit more. There you go. And that one is finished now too. I hope you like this one. I'll show you a photograph of it in the end when it dries. Thanks right, for watching. So as you can see, the paintings are dry. I have added some vinyl stickers. I do have a silhouette. It's kind of like a Cricut machine that cuts out some letters. And these are some of the logos that they use at this particular establishment that I'm making these clipboards for. And so I've mixed up some clear resin to go over top. And I'm using some Cast and Craft, which is opaque pigments. And um, I will make a little bit of waves on this one uh, when I'm done. And I have ready, I have an ABC tray. If I have extra resin, I always try to make a couple of the uh, keychains or whatever. So, all right, so we're just gonna add a layer. And I always say my general rule of thumb when covering something is about one fourth of the size. Now this one is a little bit, that one's a little bit much. That one's just about right. And then I come back, I like to spread it out with my fingers. Some people spread it out with a stick or a comb or a jagged edge. Um, like you would a countertop. I like to feel where the vinyl or where the, I like to feel where the coverage is. So that's always why I like to do it with my fingers. All right, so I'm not gonna put as much on this last one just in case I have too much that I need to spill over. And making sure my white is mixed up. And here we go. So I'm gonna move this around over top of this one because I know there's a little bit much on this one and it will spill over. Now you never wanna make your layer of resin too thin. That will cause little dimples in it. And you see I have it elevated over a cup. That way it can run over the sides just as much as it wants to. And the back is taped, so I'm not worried about that. Well, actually, that looks pretty good. And it dripped just a little bit off. Just a little bit. Beautiful. All right, and I'm going to come back with a heat gun and make sure that I go over this because resin will have bubbles in it. That's beautiful. All right, same with this one. I'm going to do it over top of the one that has a little bit less. adding waves to this one. So what I do is I usually just kind of drip just a little bit here and there. And sometimes I pick a place where there would be natural waves out in the ocean. And I just add some waves. Sometimes a second layer. Now, if you hear some strange sounds, there's construction going on next door, so. All right, so let's. All right, and then what I'll do is I'll take the heat gun and move that around a little bit. So if you watch as I'm doing this, you'll see the white spread and it'll look like the sprays of 
some waves. And sometimes I'll come back with another layer of that in a little bit after it cures some more. It'll make more white spots. So that's how you make your waves. All right, so my clipboard has sat overnight. So now it's time to reveal all of this. Now, what I like to do is I like to take a, an X-Acto knife or a box cutter, and I will make a cut across where the paper tape ends. So with this one, the resin is a little thick, so it's a little hard for me to see where it is. So I will have to loosen this a little bit first and see where it folds up to. So let me get this one off first. Get that out of my way. And I will pull up my paper tape. I'll just leave it folded a little bit just so I can find it. So let's see. So it's about right there. Okay. And this side's pulling up nicely. Sometimes it doesn't and I have to cut it. So right there I will have to cut that. And that's okay. Gives it a nice little edge. There we go. And then I fold this back down a little bit. And then it just kind of pops up along the seam. Sometimes I have to clean it up a little bit, but Usually it works pretty well. See, now that one's gonna have to get cleaned up. There we go. All right, so that's that side. And then on this side, I will pull off my tape Little bit of leakage there, not too much. That's okay. All right, and next I will put a sticker on the back for my shop. And I actually sprayed these stickers with an acrylic spray, a clear acrylic spray. I know they'll be wiping these down every day and between customers um, but it's uh the sticker is not intended to be permanent i will actually hand write some information from my shop on the the seam there but didn't that turn out beautiful what do you think mm -hmm. 